Hello and welcome to another PCS-Tech.net technology tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to teach you how to use your Interite workspace software to create a grid page or a graph page for use in your classroom. This is particularly useful in mathematics and science classrooms. So to get started I'm going to double click on my Interite workspace and that software is going to load up. No, I don't want to register. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here on my toolbar and click on the option that says grid page. Now you'll notice as I set my grid page up, this doesn't look like a grid page at all. The default settings uh, make it look something like a legal path with this title bar at the top and lines. Now that might be useful to you uh, in some situations, but in this case we want to use a uh, grid page. And to do that, I'm going to come up and click this little down arrow and I'll come over to my preferences menu. When I click on my preferences menu I get all the different options that I can set in my Interite workspace software. I'm going to come over to new page setup tab, click that, and then come down to the grid page section. Alright, so uh, first off I don't need this title block here so I'm going to turn it off by unchecking this box and as you see I have horizontal lines I need vertical lines. Now that I have vertical lines I have this nice preview of what my grid is going to look like. I can change the size of my grid by changing the spacing or the number of pixels um, between each grid or each line rather. Um, right now they're set to 30 by 30 so that's 30 tall and 30 wide. Alright and if you want to make that smaller a smaller tighter grid you can shrink it down like that or you can do this by typing too by the way you can make it larger and I'm going to stick with a 30 by 30 uh, it's important to keep in mind the students in the back of your classroom um, so they're going to be the ones who have the hardest time seeing whatever's on your board um, 30 by 30 should work fine but if you need to change that you can make it larger or smaller depending on what your needs are Okay, now if I look down here, I have this line type option, and I can change my lines to solid, dashed lines, dotted lines, or even dashed dot lines. We'll keep it with solid for now. And this option lets me change the width of the lines. This also may be useful for making your graph a little more visible to kids in the back. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at 1. The other things you can change are your background color. You have all these options to choose from color-wise and your line color. So feel free to customize it to uh, suit your needs. But just keep in mind, visibility is important. Make sure that the kids in the back uh, can see it and that it's not too painful on the eyes. So once I get things set up like I want, I'll come over here and click OK. Then I'll come back over to my right space uh, toolbar and I'll add a new graph page. Ah, now I have my awesome graph paper. But I need some axes. Alright, so I'll come over and select my line tool. This is probably the best, easiest, and quickest way to do that. So I'll click line tool, and I'll choose some line, and I'll drop me down a y-axis there. And then let's add an x-axis. And now I'm ready to go. And I can use this for all sorts of things. Uh, change over distance time graphs, change over time. I might use it to uh, graph the human population over time. You know, something like that. It's very useful. Okay. So then, we've got that set up. Now let's look at how to create a grid or a uh, graph paper sort of page that might be more useful to you in a mathematics kind of setting. To do that, I'm going to click on blank page to add a sort of go into my whiteboard mode and then I'm going to come down to the gallery and when I open the gallery I'm going to come down and select math math has all sorts of things in the little drop down menu but by just selecting the math option I get all of these different types of graph paper here and I'm going to use the one that says graph paper XY axis large number I know that'll be visible to the students in the back and to add that I simply drag and drop it right onto the field and there we go close my gallery and now I'm ready to go so maybe I want to uh, mark a couple of points on my page maybe at um, 3 4 and 1 1 
And I could talk about all sorts of coordinate type things. Uh, and I could also draw a sloped line. Just like that. So um, as you can see this has a lot of uses and uh, I hope that is a helpful tutorial to you. Uh, be sure to check back at pcs-tech.net for future tutorials and have a great day.